Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas for the Splunk Conference. This is Silicon Angles The Cube, our flagship program, where we go out to the events and extract a signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by my co-host. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante at wikibon.org. Marcus Zim is here, he's the Vice President of Product and Solutions at Splunk. Marcus, welcome to the Cube. I got to ask you, so last night we were closing the show and I said, I got to see more from Splunk out of the ecosystems. I got to see a better focus on developers. That's what I want to see. I, you know, honest to God, it was not a setup. I, see, I get up this morning, here's this uh, news release, new Splunk apps website launches with more than 400 apps and add-ons. So, yeah, I guess in my face. <laughs> yeah, boom, there it is, right? <laughs> so, we read your mind. Well, I, it's just, it's fantastic that you guys are, um, you know, doing the things that, I mean, an analyst like myself says, okay, what do I want to see more of? And you guys are actually skating to the puck, you're, a, you're ahead of the game, and I think that's what, that's what people don't really appreciate and understand about the organization, is how fast you're actually yes. moving. Yes. So talk about the announcement a little bit. Absolutely. Well, see, in the, in the keynote, there's only so much you can talk about, right? right. And there's so many things we, um, that are new and, and, and great about Splunk, and um, the ecosystem is just fundamental to Splunk. I mean, think about it. What is, what's the iPhone without the iTunes store, right? I mean, it is, content is, is fundamental. We're, we're delivering solutions to uh, different type of segments, right? And security is growing like really fast. Um, IT and application management on a big, big trajectory, and then all the business analytics. So we need content that turns this Splunk platform that we have, uh, this horizontal platform, into a specific solution for our customers. And then we need the best marketplace, the best store for people so that they can find that, they can put this together into solutions, and uh, where they see you know, premium, high quality content, content that doesn't come from Splunk, but from this entire ecosystem. I mean, that's what it's all about. Yeah, it is all about the apps, right, John? We've talked about this a lot. And yeah, I mean, Marcus, one of the things we talked on the intro just this morning uh, when we kicked it off was the use cases are so diverse with Splunk. Yeah. One of the dangers companies can get into is kind of groping and jumping on a use case where you guys more have a more of an enablement strategy. So, um, and that's proven by the ecosystem partners that are here uh, at the event. Mm -hmm. Because um, you guys have a lot of leverage on your platform, mm -hmm. you don't really know the use case and benefit until mm -hmm. your customers put it to use, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, so there's a variety of use cases. Mm -hmm. How does that change your strategy for the product? Does it, and what does that do for the ecosystem in terms of an enablement? What, do you, what, do you, what can you share there? All right, okay. Well, it's a big topic. It's a big, first of all, I, w I want you to understand that, you know, we talk about ecosystem, but ecosystem is just this variety of different players, right? I mean, ecosystem, frankly starts at developers within our customers. Take any large customers, there's people there that actually you know, take Splunk and turn it into what they want it to be, right? They embed it into other tools that they have, they might integrate it with other things, but this isn't even a partner yet, this is still within the customer. Then there is people who really build content and who actually want to make money off that content. And actually with the, with the, the new apps.splunk.com, then our new marketplace, we've actually put in better mechanism for people to monetize content. We believe that's actually really, really important in the next growth phase of the ecosystem. And, uh, and then there is, um, don't forget, system integrators. System integrators who then take a lot of this content and actually put it together into solutions for our customers. And, we have uh, initiatives for every single one of those, those target groups. Talk about the, uh, the system integrators for, for a minute because one of the things about indirect sales is mm -hmm. the ability to enable people to make more services revenue. Yes. It's kind of not talked about because it's kind of not that sexy, but services revenue is the lifeblood of the channel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what, what, are, what are you seeing for use cases that you guys are enabling in that integration model? What use cases, what are integrators doing with Splunk that's driving value for them? Okay, very good. Um, it really does fall into these three segments that I mentioned before. I mean, there is people who do a living of really helping well, big companies run their data centers, their IT infrastructure, and then these, these services, these business services that they provide. So yeah, Splunk fits into that. There is, uh, Gardner has coined the, the term IT operations analytics, that's a new, it's a new space and system integrators are helping customers 
build solutions in that space. It's a security. Um, the large system integrators understand you know, how important security is today for their customers. I mean, and security actually borders also into fraud. Fraud detection, which is a huge topic, which a incredible business value, and you need a, a system integrator to help you there. And then last but not least, um, you know, people have business processes. And what, what maybe people don't fully realize yet is like if Splunk is able to kind of make an application run well, a monitor and manage it, then we can also actually manage a chain of these applications that make a business process really well. And uh, I mean, business processes is what system integrators are all about. So we fit right into kind of how they make business. One of your uh, features of your announcement was the new version of the REST API. And mm -hmm. Dave and I always talk about this, the cloud has really enabled this API economy. So, so what, what have you guys seen in the evolution of the API? And you have the new cloud version out of, of product. Yep. Uh, what is the role of the API with, with Splunk and how do you see that evolving? Well, APIs are just fundamental for what we, what, what's interoperability, right? So we are, the platform for machine data. We're the data fabric in our customers' enterprises. So if you are a platform, you know, one of the things, you got to be open. And you have to interoperate. If you're not, you're not a platform. I mean, it's, you got to, I mean, it's the two things. You got to have content that people build on top of it. If you don't, then you're not a platform and you got to be interoperable. Uh, so the API is the key element to being interoperable. And we do that in, in many different ways. I mean, we have, um, ways to bring Splunk content into like portal environments like SharePoint for example and we talked about some of this in the, in the keynote we have ways with think of the ODBC driver as a type of an API and, and people be able to consume data from Splunk in another tool um, and then also obviously t just to, to tie Splunk into a business application or business process, and, and that's where it gets really, really interesting. So this is an interesting topic, right, because you guys are first to market, you, you make the market basically, um, and then, you know, we have this conversation all the time on theCUBE, a company like, like you, I mean, we've talked to, to folks like Cloudera about this, the open source community then comes in and says, oh wow, okay, we can, we can do some similar things. Um, so you've got to embrace that, obviously. Uh -huh. Talk about Splunk's relationship with the open source community, um, your utilization of, of, of open source software. Um, how, how, you know, I always ask people on a scale of one to 10, how open source friendly are you? You know, some companies are a two and they're learning. Mm -hmm. um, some companies, you know, they're all in, you know, like a Hortonworks. Yep. Where do you guys stand? Well, we use an incredible amount of open source in our product. Yeah, you're very savvy so, users, adopters absolutely. of open I mean, source. Absolutely, I mean, we have right? uh, people in our engineering staff who have been contributed to the Linux kernel. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there is, there is uh, personal connections there, there is uh, expertise in how to work with that, and then... There's respect for that community, obviously. No, right? absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And then, um, well, let's, let's talk about Hunk, for example, right? Because that kind of is a a play together with the open source of the future, which is the Hadoop uh, open source community. And, and we believe there's a, there's a give and take, right? We are, we're actually working with um, the ecosystem partners in, um, in the Hadoop environment. Um, we're, I mean, as I told before, we respect and we bring open source into our product, but then we also feel with Hunk, we actually really added to the open source community, we brought some value to Hadoop um, that actually just, you know, will take that ecosystem to the next level. So let's talk some more about, more about some of these applications that you guys developed. You got a new website that you're launching. Uh -huh. It's the uh, Splunk Apps website. There's 400 yes. apps that you're launching. These obviously weren't all developed yesterday. These are apps that have developed over time that you're now consolidating onto the website. So it's right? 400 now, uh, and uh, just last year alone, in the last 12 months, 100 new were added. So now some of the ones you're calling out, the Splunk app for VMware, the REST API modular input, uh -huh. you've got um, stuff in here from Pentaho, um, uh, data sift, social data streams, and modular input. Um, you know, talk about some of the, the ones that you're, you're highlighting in, in mm -hmm. this press release and, and, and what about them excites okay. you. Excellent. Um, well, let's talk about classes of application. How's, how's that? Um, 
So there are ecosystem application. You mentioned Pentaho, a uh, pre-alert is mentioned in the, uh, in the press release. And really these are applications that Splunk did not create, that the ecosystem created. And we're very fortunate to have this kind of vibrant ecosystem and have someone like pre you know, enhance Splunk in terms of uh, predictive capabilities. That's huge, mm. that's big, that actually kind of accelerates innovation. Um, Pentaho is very similar, I mean, have like a, a BI player partner up with us and, and you know, interconnect the two of our um, application platforms. Um, okay, so this is the ecosystem, then we do add kind of weekly, monthly, new, what we call inputs. So if you think about Splunk, it's all about building analytics from machine data. Machine data comes from all kinds of different devices and you know there's an app for all of these different devices. If that app exists, things just get faster. And time to value, I mean you, you, might, have, you might have noticed that in the keynote. The instant value is just something we're absolutely fanatic about. This is what Splunk is all about. We want to be that different enterprise software where everything's fast like instant gratification. So a lot of these apps like the SNMP or uh, JMS, JMX, they're basically there for people to just more rapidly build solutions. And then last but not least, the category uh, VMware app. So VMware app I'll put in the category of premium applications. Uh, VMware is actually an application we charge for. Uh, there's an extra price tag for it. We have another application, Enterprise Security that is actually ranked by Gartner as a leader in the SIM magic quadrant. And mm -hmm. it's a big deal for us. So these are, these are not just tiny little applications. These are really fundamental big building blocks. And so with these applications, we want to be thought leaders. And you, can, and you can charge for them, right? I mean, we can charge them and people... And VMware uh, customers are used to paying. So, right, so. Here you go. But, <laughs> but this app is something where we collect more data than VMware does for their own, own monitoring tools, right? Yeah, and, and they'll talk about their monitoring tool, but you guys are, like say, adding value beyond that. Exactly, right? so, so it's like these like, hard ways to get the machine data, that's number one, and then also if you look at the visualizations, if you might have seen in the keynote, there's yeah, like, yeah. there's really beautiful interactive, like not just visualizations, but task flows. So these are apps that just are, think of them as a next generation of apps. Well, in, in VMware, sometimes it's very hard to decipher what's going on inside of VMware because it's, you know, it's this abstracted layer and everything's just sort of blended together. So tools like this are critical. What's the business model uh, for, for, for this market? So it's, you didn't call it an app store. Yes. So you're not selling the app. It's not a transaction site, right? Uh -huh. So how does it work? Your, your partners, um, uh, they resell uh, Splunk or they get you know, preferred access to Splunk mm -hmm. or they go to customers that have Splunk. Yeah. How does that work? So a good question, and I think it, it shows really nicely these kind of growth stages of the uh, ecosystem. So in, in stage one, what was important for us was really to get as much content into that marketplace as possible. So you do that by just having, you know, and have people consume it. So you want to make it uh, a community-based approach, right? You want people to share their content and you want to do it for free. You so gotta get a critical right. mass there, yeah. You get the critical mass <laughs> yeah. and then you're actually getting to stage two where now you want to pull in ecosystem partners that are really serious about building this content. And there, yeah, you want to have an ability for them to monetize their content. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the new store that was announced today actually has a feature in there. We call it the directory listing where we actually allow them, um, our ecosystem partners, to link out to their sites where they, then they can transact. Mm. So we're not, we're not a e-commerce marketplace, right. but we give people now the ability to use that as a listing, just have a place where everyone comes to, and then uh, transact a fee in, in their environment. You know, um, we were talking about VMware before. One of the models that I would uh, you know, ask you guys to take a look at, I don't know if you've looked at this or not, the metric that VMware used to use, still does, I'm sure, but Todd Nielsen, when he was on theCUBE, what was the stat, John? For every dollar spent on a VMware license, it was like 10, 12, $15 were spent mm -hmm. in the ecosystem. Okay. And that's 
a you know, sign of real success, reaching that critical mass. And then the second point, stage two, where you're pulling in partners that are serious that can monetize this, that gives you a lot of leverage. So that, that one to N metric yep. is always a key indicator. I don't know how you actually track it precisely, but there's probably a way that you can reasonably estimate it. It's, this is key for us. Mm. So again, we're at this borderline between phase one and yeah. phase two. Awesome. So uh, right now, I think you know, our metric is to, it's in the dollars of the platform. In the years to come, it will absolutely be in what, what in Todd ecosystem. tracks. In, yeah. you know, how much does the ecosystem get out of this? And we're actually setting very concrete signals. I think by us starting to charge for content, we're setting a signal that, yeah, you're an, you're an ecosystem partner, you, you can make money of that too, yeah. right? right? That's actually very important. We're now giving new abilities to actually, you know, uh, logistically how to do that with this directory listing. Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Marcus, thanks for coming inside theCUBE. We got uh, the hook on time, but I'll give you the final word. What should folks know about the ecosystem and the, and the, the developer focus real quick? It, share, it's with them, mm. share the focus of the sound bite. On oh, the, the focus, developer. sound bite, it's just to, to, yeah. to wrap it up. Uh, well, number one, this is a top priority. Uh, we totally understand that the ecosystem is just a, a phenomenal lever point, leverage point that we have. Um, there are multiple initiatives, as I laid out. It's, uh, the ecosystem is not just one party, it's many, many different parties. Um, we have a long list of things that we do for every single one of them, and you know, as I stated before, I think we're we're at the cusp of that getting really big. So um, I'm I'm just super excited about the the next couple of years ahead and the, on what the ecosystem will do for Splunk. There it is, the developer focus. They got a real platform, enabling platform, very hot. We're at the Splunk conference. It's the Cube. We're right back with our next guest after this short break.